uh, who is a, a neighbor, an activist, uh, a great, great uh, contributor to the commons, I would say. You are Bob Fuller. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank welcome you. Welcome back. I hope I don't have to play any music. No, no. We, you don't, <laughs> no, just stand on your head. To, yeah, we <laughs> might have to do a whole right. pull-up. We all we do. We, you know, it's a dog and pony show in here. Yeah. I just, uh, I'm just reading this uh, paper and I saw something terrible about a field school teacher, but I'll wait. Yeah. I'll wait on that one. We actually uh, call Bob up because um, we've got a bike ride. Uh, we've got a bunch of activities happening this weekend, including the Heartlands anniversary tonight, but the normal and wonderful Glenwood Sunday Market um, is just spawning all kind of other activities, which I just love about it. Tell us what's going on this week and how it came about. So, we, uh, like any weekend in Rogers Park, you're, you're right, there's a lot going on, but tomorrow is the fourth annual 49th Ward Bicycle Ride, um, mm -hmm. which kicks off uh, at 8 a.m. Registration starts at 7.30 in the morning at 7356 North Greenview, um, and there will be some refreshments to get things started, and then there will be a tour of the 49th Ward led by Alderman Joe Moore, including parts of the ward uh, that will be included in the new map of the, the right. 49th Ward, so big sections uh, south of Pratt Boulevard that were formerly in another ward. And that were They're prior coming to that. home. They're coming back. Yeah. That's what they people, are. people happy to be back in the 49th Ward, yeah. that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's Who great. would you rather have as an alderman, Joe Moore or Patrick O'Connor? Well, okay, keep going. <laughs> goes without saying. So at 8 a.m., people are leaving from the ward office there at Greenview and Jarvis. Yeah, that's right. They're gathering there. And, and then, it'll be about a, an hour long <coughs> ride. Um, Throughout the, the neighborhood, there will be a couple stops with uh, some water breaks and things like that. And then it'll end up at the uh, Glenwood Sunday Market where we're having a bike and wellness fair filled with vendors uh, related to bicycling and overall wellness and things uh, from different healthcare providers uh, to a great uh, kid who's going to be playing his guitar. Hopefully, as well as uh, your your guest before me, Chris Tomiano. Yeah, <laughs> is that is the wellness fair uh, right on the street in the fair itself in the um, market. market itself, or is it in one of the storefronts? It's actually an extension of the Glenwood Sunday Market. Oh. Uh, the Glenwood Sunday Market, which is normally between Lunt and Morse, right? It'll be there, um, but then the wellness fair is going to be taking place on Glenwood Avenue between Morse and Farwell. Oh, okay, so Very a little good. bit south. So it's, yeah. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Two blocks of excitement. Two blocks of excitement. <laughs> and you, you are, you know, of course you are uh, vying with the Heartland Heat of the Summer run at the same moment, but hey, there's room for everything. Too bad it's not a triathlon, we didn't space them out. That's well, there's true. a kayak race today uh -huh. on, uh, oh, on the Beach. lake. Yeah. Oh, at Leon, there is, that's right. Maybe we can make them all three at once next year. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. We always racing. want to do a little triathlon. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be fun. We've got the lake. We've got so, the bodies. So tell me about, uh, are you a bike rider and a bike aficionado, or did you get it just pulled into this because you're a political activist? Uh, a little of both. I'm not, I'm not really, I wouldn't call myself a bike aficionado. I don't, I don't even work on my own bike, sadly. <laughs> um, I mostly use it just for getting around the neighborhood because it's easier than parking. Right. Um, and, it's, you know, it's a little healthier way of getting around. and. When it's cold, you're only cold for a couple minutes, and when it's hot, you're sweating anyways. I remember on Live from the Heartland, we had, I don't know if it was people from the Bicycle <coughs> Federation, uh, but it was winter time, and it was snowing out, and uh, they came to talk about riding a bike in the winter. Active transportation. And they were, they were great. They, were, they had these sort of snow outfits to go with their bike riding. And I, I'm, I've been a bike rider for a long, long time, and I just the uh, thing that keeps knocking me down is getting my bike stolen. Last year I got my bike stolen with the helmet that had taken me years to actually finally go, okay, okay, I'll wear a helmet. And yeah, then, well, that's a big deal. I'm in mean, yeah. Chicago, yeah. and uh, tomorrow we'll have folks from the Chicago Bicycle Ambassadors there talking about safety uh, while riding a bike, but then also with tips of how to keep your bike safe while you're not with it, too. One thing that is happening more is driver anger at bikers. Oh, definitely. I notice. As there are more bike bike riders in the streets, um, drivers. Well, the, the way that they got set up with those bike lanes take half the street. 
Well, there's there's no, that. I sound like a gnarly old guy, but I, I like, like advice. I sound for advice. I just did that. But as there a are there are valid. Obviously, there are valid complaints to be made. I think uh, biking, bike riding on the sidewalks is ridiculous and very dangerous. To and it's both, against the law after you're 12 years old. Uh, for but both pedestrians and drivers, because drivers don't expect a bike to come whipping out of the sidewalk. Um, so, but I also, as a bike rider, I do not understand how anybody would choose to do battle with CTA buses, etc., on a street like Sheridan Road or Western Avenue. There's so many lovely side streets to travel on. Um, but I'm an old lady, and I, I'm, I'm the kind you, you do when you see me on a bike. I'm like the wicked witch. Well, it's definitely true. I don't, I don't think uh, whether you're walking, driving, riding a bike, or in a hot air balloon, there's some people who just aren't courteous and other people without any sense at all. Right. Uh, but that's another thing that the part of our ride tomorrow will talk about appropriate behavior while you're on a bike. Mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, you can still be a, a mean person, but uh, you, you should be, at least think about your safety and the safety of others while, while on a bicycle. Because uh, it's a great way of getting around, but it's also a, a great way of getting into a lot of trouble physically or with the law. Yeah, I I like that's Bob Fuller telling you you can still be a mean person just <laughs> just as long as you follow the law. I want to ask Bob another question um, because last time you were here it was to uh, sort of let people know about the local school council elections. You were uh, part of that effort and you got elected to. To I'm I'm on the field what? elementary uh, local school council, and despite my handwriting, I'm this, I was nominated as secretary. Um, so there you go. So, everyone um, has their talent. Do you have to do it by hand? Or you have a, can't you have a little computer there? Uh, that's what I'm going to do after the first meeting, after uh, people couldn't read what I wrote. Well, tell, <laughs> tell people who don't know what the school councils are and how important they are and what your activities are. Sure. So uh, local school councils is a unique uh, body in Chicago. Uh, Unlike uh, most towns where they have an elected school board, in Chicago we have each school has its own school council uh, of teachers, parents, community members, and in high schools there's also a student. So, um, and we're responsible for the budget, for hiring and firing of the principal, um, and for really being the people who uh, create buy-in and, and, and do the things that, that can't be done just uh, by paid staff members in, in, a, in a school. Mm -hmm. the, you know, one of the recent uh, issues in the neighborhood was the whole uh, question about the um, getting the ballot, getting on the ballot an elected school board for this, the entire city and our own alderman's role in that back and forth, which we won't go into now. But part of the problem, I think, that he could rightfully point to is the number of people, why hold another election regarding schools when we already have local school council elections that most people do not participate in. I mean, most people don't participate in the elect presidential. I was just thinking the, uh, another way. I said, well, how come we have local school board elections, but we can't have an election for the school board? I know that people think, well, the larger, school larger the school board. and. Um, uh, you know, some people think that just another election will be too many politics. There's Obviously, that. there's politics at the local level, and we are the only city uh, in Illinois that doesn't have an elected school board. If I'm is that true? That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, and across the country, I, I, I'm not sure how many others don't have an elected school board. Um, but uh, you know, it, there's a lot of questions of of how many elections. I personally think that the local school council election should take place during normal elections. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, would have be... the professionals at the board of elections or the county clerk's office run right. those elections rather than, uh, you know, I, any chance worked, that'll happen? I <laughs> doubt it. Uh, but it, it would certainly take a, a lot of pressure off of uh, staff members at each school who have to suddenly figure out how to run an election. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Uh, um, Tell us about the school board elections in Rogers Park. How many schools, how many elections? Uh, there's always been kind of a battle between uh, old guard, support the principals when principals were not necessarily worthy of support. Uh, some were. Uh, but uh, then, then newer folks or activist people, progressives, uh, taking a position and uh, the, the local school council elections were really great uh, in, in many ways. 
what's the what's it like today and how many of them do we have going on sure so there are I believe five elementary schools within the Rogers Park community boundaries um, and then two two or three high schools depending on how you count them um, and each of them have their own local school council aside from the charters um, and so that's a that's a whole another bag of socks but um, the 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 you know, in my experience, not having a lot of history, uh, some of the things I saw this time around were a lot of people recruited by progressive organizations like Progressive Alliance, uh, Northside Democracy for America to run as school, uh, school council members. Uh, that brought a lot of new blood in. I think there's also a lot of people who are kind of sick of, you know, the lesser of two evils of a of throwing your kids into a, a, a crazy competitive system um, of selective enrollment or send your kids and hope they get a good education at a local school. Um, so I think a lot of people were really interested in making that a lot better. And this time around, I think there's a huge wave of, of uh, especially Latino parents who got very involved. I know at Field Elementary and uh, New Field Elementary, uh, the, the, uh, the, there was a, a huge wave of, of this growing demographic um, who participated and, and got going in this. Yeah, one of our chefs from the Heartland is uh, now, what did you tell us on the way president. down? He's, he's the, 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 the president of our local school council. I love that. Yeah. You go, Mr. Trevino. Uh, tre Trejo. 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 Lorenzo Trejo. <laughs> Lorenzo Trejo. He's been with us a lot of years. So He's a wonderful man. Yeah. Um, what kind of issues do you uh, deal with? Uh, uh, like, for example, the, uh, there's parking in the field school parking lot probably for some churches. Is that something that goes through the principal? Does it go through the school council? How does that sort of thing get handled? That's a, that's a big question that, that actually me and Mr. Trejo are trying to figure out um, because it's, it's kind of a, an unused big parking lot that A, should be uh, more green space but then also could be utilized by a community the business to alleviate a lot of the parking pressures we have. In oh, you read my mind. Yeah. Actually, there's some, we've had discussions on this with some people, and it is a real uh, important issue, I think, because parking is such a crisis, and not only in the 49th Ward, but in other areas, too. Yeah, but I think a, a discussing concrete outside of a school should also include the notion that the kids need a more green space. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that southwest corner of the field school that the furthest away from the parking entrance would be great to yeah. be a field, an actual field at field school. I, I really uh, applaud your your uh, activism, Bob. And um, I also know I ran into you at the uh, at the phone banking that we do at the 49th Ward. Um, last week we had technical issues which seem to uh, plague. They're following you around, Katie. The, the technical I would have gotten blamed if I had shown up for the phone banking, but... No, no. I, I, had, I had been phone banking three or four weeks before the technical things happened this week. But, well, it's, um, tell us what goes on with the phone banking. So, every Tuesday and Wednesday night, uh, the 49th Ward Democrats, as you should know, Michael is the president of the 49th Ward Democrats. <laughs> I uh, every Move to my right. Every Tuesday <laughs> and Wednesday, uh, we have a phone bank uh, calling into battleground states throughout the Midwest to get out the vote, uh, to support the president, and to support progressives um, going into Congress, the Senate, state and local races. So. Yeah, actually lately we're, we've been calling supporters to uh, get them excited about traveling to Iowa on August 25th for a day to do some out-of-state canvassing. We'll talk more about those kind of politics along uh, as they come closer to us, but Michael, yeah, could you do some phone banking in your own organization one of these days, please? I will. All right. I that's will. I, I, I'm always trying to see when the Sox are not playing the night game, but now that I have I know, this iPhone, important. wait, I got an iPhone now, I can keep track of all kind of things going on in the world. Oh, God help us. All right, so Bob Fuller, we want to thank you for coming on the thank live you. from the Heartland Show. And the bike, the bike fair? Again, starts at 8 a.m. And the ride. the ride starts at 8 a.m. And the fair oh, yeah. is at the Glenwood Sunday Market starting at 9 a.m.
So oh. 7356 North, North Greenview if you want to be part of the, the ride at 8 a.m. It's a great weekend to be in Rogers Park. The L is now open. You can get off at the Morris Lunt L stop. It's the Heartland Cafe's 36th anniversary. Uh, the Heartland Heat of the Summer 5K is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Show up to Heartland. The, uh, the bike ride is happening. Show up to the Alderman's office at 8 a.m. And next Friday night we got a movie in the park. And uh, we the want Adventures to of Tin Tin. Friday night in Loyola Park, come on. It's too right much next fun. to the stand in the sand. And we want to thank yeah. all the people who make this show possible. Uh, Paul Wozniak, Mary Wozniak, Angel Herrera, Eli Sloan, Lisa Smith, Laura Herman, Dan Kugler, and our new in studio engineer, Jay Sarate. And Jay okay. is going to take us out with uh, a song Irene by the Smith Westerns. The Smith Westerns are uh, a band I do know all of the kids. One of them is my own. Oh, and they weeks. will be. Did I say Smith? Oh, Twin Peaks. Mm. Smith Westerns is the band the other kid was in. Mm. Okay, I would stand corrected. We're talking Twin Peaks. They will be the opening act on Saturday at the Glenwood Avenue Arts Fest next Saturday. Oh, yeah. That's a big weekend. So we got another big weekend at Rogers Park. God, Thanks for listening to Live from the Heartland. We encourage you to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do. Uh, for Katie Hogan and myself, Michael James, we say thank you and all, all power, power to, to the, the people. people. Take it away, Twin Peaks.